Thank you, Keith. Welcome to the art of promoting your club. Everybody's been enjoying Lace so far. We have a fun session planned to help you build and bring in all those guests to your club. And hopefully they will all join as a member. I know you are all part of Outstanding Clubs. Let's dive in. Who's had an opportunity to prepare their club promotion plan as part of their pathways? Seeing a lot of hands. Okay, no worries. That is okay. We're going to talk about it today. I do encourage you to log in to your base camp and take a look at the communication plan. That way you can build the plan for your club. Okay, so we want to think about who our target audience is. Who do we think our target audience is? Anyone want to share what they think? Okay, our members are always the heart of everything we do. I love our members. I hope everybody has a good cadence for communicating with their members, and we'll touch on it a little bit today. But our secondary audience, I like to say, is those guests that we've met before, but they haven't moved through the funnel to become a member yet. They're on their way to becoming a member because you're all part of Outstanding Clubs. Our third audience, those are the guests we have not met. And they are the potential guests. And they may or may not be a Toastmaster, but we haven't met them in our club yet. So today we're going to talk a lot about how to bring in those new guests, our third audience, but of course we will touch on our first and second audience because we want to make sure that all our audiences are engaged in our promotion. We're going to talk a little bit about what our goals are, what messages we need to communicate, because it's great to have a goal, but now that you have your goal, what am I actually going to communicate? how you're going to communicate with them, how often you communicate with them, what tools you can use to communicate with them. A lot of great things to talk about today. So, I want to ask, what are your goals? Anybody like to share a goal they have for their club? Well, we want to bring into our club, let's say, at least... I think I would say like one new member, hopefully, per maybe my goal goal would be one member per mm -hmm. month. Great. That is a fantastic like, that goal. That would be a big goal so that we kind of like, you know, shoot big. Yeah. I mean, we, we need to set those targets high because we're all part of outstanding clubs and we want to help others see the value of Toastmasters and bring new people in. You know, I think for the context of this plan, well, yes, we want members i think the first step is to get guests so once you have the guests then you can convert them to members but for the context of this plan we're really going to focus on bringing in those guests and then of course through your high quality meetings and closing the deal your guests will become actual members okay but before we launch all our promotion, we need to make sure that our house is in order. I like to say when my mom's going to come, I make sure I deep clean the house. I put all the junk away that I've been meaning to put away. I want to make sure I'm neat and tidy. My mom knows I'm a disaster child. She raised me. I want to show, you know, I am kind of a responsible adult. The same goes for launching our club promotion. We want to make sure that we have our house in order and we are welcome to our guests. We want to be neat and tidy and run those high quality meetings, but we also need to prepare to invite those guests. We're going to look at your find a club, your unique value proposition, your club website, and of course, who do you know? One of the things we're going to talk a lot about is the external promotions, but we want to also make sure that our members are comfortable 
with their information, their likeness being shared. I do strongly encourage you to have every member sign a photo video release form that, and let your members know how you'll be using their photos. Same goes for guests. Make sure you're not taking random screenshots and posting it. If you do, I do encourage a family photo at the end and let them know that you will be posting it. But if you plan to take those random screenshots during your meeting and post them, I highly suggest you have the photo and video release form so that way your members do know that they will be used out there on social media or your website. Very, very important because we do want to make sure that everybody's comfortable with the promotion plan. Find a club. I get so many calls and people say, Julie, you're the only one that picked up. Now, of course, we're always a little hesitant to pick up because we don't know if it's going to be one of those crazy spammers calling us, trying to sell us on our car's extended warranty, or maybe it's the IRS saying that we owe them some money, but it's not really the IRS. Therefore, we want to make sure that our Find a Club is update because everybody says, Julie, you're the only one that picked up. Why? Because they will call people and they say, oh, I'm not a part of this club. I'm not really sure. I don't have the current meeting information. Really important that you log in to your club central and take a look and see, is my club meeting information correct? And is it somebody that's actually going to check their email on a regular basis? And will they check their voicemails on a regular basis I or their text messages? I know there's some people, they just drop off the face of the earth for a few days. It's not the person that you want to have as your find a club contact. You can decide as a club who that person's going to be. That person that loves to check email and is constantly attached to their information. That is your great find a club contact. Your unique value proposition. This is so important because you're competing with all the clubs out there, especially if you're an online club. There's thousands of clubs. How can your club stand out? It's easy when we were in person. Easier because, well, this time week works, this time this week works, or this location works based off where I live or work. But now that a lot of our clubs are hybrid or fully online, we really have to determine what makes us unique because we have to determine why should somebody come visit my club versus another club. At any point in day, I'm sure there is a club that is meeting. It was really important to determine what makes your club unique. And you may not know right away. It may be something that you have to think about because we love our clubs and we just show up to meetings sometimes. But what attracts us to that club? And what, more importantly, keeps us renewing our membership? We don't just wake up one day and decide, of course, I'm going to renew because I want to hang out with my friends because we don't have to pay to hang out with our friends. There's something that's attracting us to our club. Is it the high quality speakers? Do you have speakers that are regularly going to the World Championship of Public Speaking? And that ups your speaking level. Do you have evaluations, a special evaluation role? Do you have global table topics? What is it about your meeting that truly makes it unique? And it may be beyond the meeting. It may be the experience that the club provides in some way. Perhaps it's a dinner club. And that's something that you focus on. And everybody talks about different recipes or photography. You share photography tips. So you really need to think about what makes your club unique and incorporate that into all your messaging and make sure that that is a target focus of all your meetings. You also want to develop your target audience. Of course, we want anyone over the age of 18 to be a member because they're all eligible. But to really be effective, I encourage you to narrow down your target audience. And of course, we're not going to turn away guests that are not part of our target audience, but it will help you attract more members that are part of the experience. Even if you're a corporate club, you can have a target audience. And if you're a corporate club, your audience may change over time. 
for one quarter or maybe one month, you want to focus on perhaps your finance team and your messages would center on the value that it has for a finance person. And perhaps the next month or quarter, it's about focusing on your marketing team, how they can be better marketers and your club can help them with that. So really important to think about who is your target audience. And then in all your promotions, make sure that you subtly mention the benefits for that target audience. It may take some time to develop the new cadence and the new voice for your club, but I really have found that clubs that understand what makes them unique and how that target audience are bringing in those guests and those guests are more likely to become a member. Does anybody want to share what they think their club's unique value proposition is? You can go ahead and unmute or drop it in chat. I think um, that's actually, first of all, um, Julie, I think that's a really great point that you made, uh, The what's the unique proposition. I think for our club, it's that came first to my mind was the uh, internationalness of our club because we are very diverse. We are from Europe, from the States, from, yeah, North, uh, like eight, like some part of, of Asia, but like, so we are like a very diverse group and that kind of like really makes it super interesting and exciting. Yeah, that's a great point. I would say you know, dig a little bit deeper because there are a lot of clubs that especially now that we're online are international. So maybe you can think about is, you know, the networking or the culture, how you bring that into your meeting. And I think that might help you describe the unique value proposition a little bit more because we have a lot of online only clubs that are pretty large. So dig a little bit deeper, but you are definitely on that right track. Uh, I have a comment. Yeah. What I did being a club coach was I asked all the club members to say why they liked the club, what they thought made the club unique. I took all those things and I put them all together and I fed them to chat GPT and it came back with an awesome too many words though. And I rephrased that lower number of words and got a very nice purpose statement for the website. Oh, I love that. ChatGPT is can definitely be your friend. Uh, so thank you for sharing, Dr. Diana D. That is a great way. Um, so everybody, did we hear that? Let's let's ask our members why they think our club is unique and let's throw that into ChatGPT and see what it comes out with. But yes, that is a great point to not just take what you have straight out of ChatGPT, but to refine it and make it a little bit more custom. So Thank you so much for sharing. And I saw that Jean shared that for pastime pursuits is the special evaluation master role. It really makes that club unique. So thank you so much for sharing. Does anybody want to share what is that one key message that you hope to communicate about your club? I think Jean kind of covered the evaluation master and Dana, Dr. Dana D, what was it that you came up with for the club's description? Or I I'd have to look it up. But okay. I did, no I worries. Did the same for one of my clubs, Lens Masters, which is a specialty club designed to take your photography to a higher level by giving you feedback on your photos by allowing you the opportunity to see and critique the photos of others, and by helping you develop the soft skills required in every area of life. That's a perfect way to incorporate Toastmasters and a hobby and help you understand, or even a profession. Photography is also a profession as well, but it really helps you understand how Toastmasters can fit into all aspects of your life. So thank you so much for sharing, because it's definitely, as a photographer, especially if it's your profession, how can you communicate effectively with your clients to get that new business or to keep your current clients happy? So thank you so much. 
Okay. A few tips for our club website. Keep that information current. How can I find you? So many times I go to a club website. Nobody's supposed to do it for two years. The information's out of date. It says they meet in person, but they're only online. Or it says they're online, but they've actually gone in person. Really important. Similar to your Club Central, how can I find you? What makes your club special? Because the Toastmasters websites can become very cookie cutter. But I want to visit your club because you're special. So when a potential member is looking through the various websites, the ones that are going to stand out are the ones that have done the customization and describe their unique value proposition. And once you have that unique value proposition, your target audience is going to want to become a guest. And eventually, because you're all outstanding, they're going to become a member. I cannot emphasize enough to not put the exact Zoom meeting ID on your club website. You know, we, Zoom bombers, they show up at our meetings, but they're not really there to learn. We could teach them better communication skills so they don't just show up yelling at us. They can develop a little more empathy, a little bit more vocal variety, but they just wreak havoc on our meetings. I encourage you to use the Zoom registration links or who to contact for that Zoom information. And once again, that Zoom information contact needs to be somebody that's regularly going to check their email. That person that cannot live without their phone. Add the theme of your meeting. Recaps with photos and your club achievements. A few of the reasons are it will naturally help your club rank higher in the search engine optimization rankings because you're always feeding new content. So Google rewards that and it also adds a dynamic. When people are looking for clubs, they want to look for someone that's like them or someone that they aspire to be. And so when you have a dynamic website, then you're going to be more likely to attract someone. And if you don't have a website, no worries. You can get started on your website journey for free. And it is all part of your club's Toastmasters International abilities. And so I encourage you, if you do not have a website, go ahead and request one and if you need any help customizing your website, just let me know and we can do a quick Zoom meeting and we can get on your customization journey. Here's a couple examples of club websites that I thought do a really good job at the unique value proposition. Pastime Pursuits, as Jean Cassidy mentioned, the Evaluation Master. This describes what the Evaluation Master is. And I don't know a lot of clubs that have this special evaluation. The club still has the traditional evaluation plus the added bonus role. And the back talkers. I thought they do a really good job at the celebration, coming together as a club. And this is a club that I'm thinking, they have a good time at their meeting. They enjoy spending time together. And that's why they have the celebration. I want to hang out with people that are having a good time. And I also want the opportunity to grow my skills. So these are a couple of clubs that I really thought did a great job showcasing their unique value proposition and the club personality. Okay. Who do you know? I so often say, oh, you know what? I really need to invite some guests to my club meeting. But it's hard. Life gets happens. It gets in the way. I mean to send that email, but then I get sidetracked. But when there's an open house, I am more likely to send that email. We all have that concerted effort as a club working together, I find, when you have an open house. But what also helps motivate your members is to enter them into a drawing, gamifying the experience. Who can bring in the most guests? And maybe you get bonus points for if those guests become a member. We're all part of great clubs here in Founders District, and the district provides Toastmasters International swag for meeting certain accomplishments along the way in the year. So I encourage you to 
take advantage of that swag and use it for something for your open house. Do those raffles, get your members motivated, get them excited. And once you're out there promoting, also don't forget about promoting your members. I find a lot of times when we have an open house, we bring in a really great keynote speaker, but they're not always part of our club. I still think those keynote speakers are great because they draw people to your club. They show that your club has a great outstanding meetings and everybody has fun and they learn. But the next step is to, once you have the open house, have a special education meeting. Once again, everybody will be very focused on inviting, following up with all those guests, and it will showcase your members. It will also help your members work on their advanced projects. Because I hear a lot of times people say, I don't have enough time to do the panel presentation and I have to do it outside my club. But what if your club dedicates that meeting to a panel presentation? One of the secrets to a panel presentation, I find, is you have a couple of your members, because once again, we want to showcase our members, but you also have a couple guests that you would like to become a member of your club. They're already feeling like they're a member of your club, partaking in the experience, and they're more likely to join. Not always. I've done panel presentations, and my guests have not joined, but I've also done it, and they have. So that's something to think about as you're working on your work with your vice president of education to see what are your members doing and ask your members who is ready to work on an advanced project and then make a big push. You can, of course, and I encourage you to promote all your meetings, but really I find everybody comes together and works as a club to promote the open houses and those special education meetings. A few tools that we can use to promote our club, the newsletter, social media, and member recognition. Newsletter, this creates the FOMO, the fear of missing out. Because if you write all your content as sizzle, if you write it as each one of these speeches are an open house, even if it's not an open house, but if you add that excitement to each of your speeches, People are going to open the newsletter and say, man, I really want to go to that. That looks like a really great speech. Precept FOMO sometimes will come. Sometimes they won't because they already have another commitment. But it does showcase the high quality of your club. Highlight that upcoming meeting information. Get those people to come back, especially if you have former members and previous guests. If you create that FOMO, they might just come back and then perhaps they will become a member. You can also add the excitement of the meetings, include photos from your previous meetings, smiling faces, people in action. Always a great way to elevate that fear of missing out. Member achievements. What a great way to make your members feel incredibly special. Recognition is one of the keys to retention. And we can go beyond the Toastmasters achievements because I find once you become a club and you've been together for a while, you start learning more about your members and you start learning about their professional achievements, their personal achievements. And that is something that with their permission, of course, you can highlight. Key deadlines and reminders. Now, of course, we're going to follow up outside of our newsletter. We're going to provide all the key deadlines and reminders during our meeting, but it's just another touch point for them to remember, oh, you know what, that's right. I need to submit my dues or, oh, you know, club officer elections are coming up. Would anybody be interested in running for an officer position? So we hope that we don't just ball and tell someone. We, the best experience is when they organically say, yes, I am interested and you have a true election. Of course, mention it at your meetings, but it's a great way to complement it with your newsletter because when I'm reading my emails, I'm like, oh, that's right. I need to do that because I, I'm so excited at the meeting and then I go home and I forget. MailChimp is free for up to a thousand cents per month and it's a great way 
to make it visual and is a great way that people can also unsubscribe if they lose interest. I know you're all going to have that sizzle content and everyone's going to have the fear of missing out, but if somebody decides that they can miss out and not join the fun, then they can easily unsubscribe. If you have more than a thousand people on your guest list, I would love to chat with you to find out how you have collected so many people and see how we can up your game and make them or encourage them to be a member. Because we can't force anybody to be a member, but we can highly encourage them. Social media. Review the brand manual. Toastmasters is a professional organization. We want to make sure that we maintain that professionalism and the same look and feel when we're doing our club promotion. And if you're not a graphic designer, that is perfectly okay. I am not a graphic designer. I have served as the vice president of public relations, and I've also served as our district public relations manager. Toastmasters International has some tools and resources to help us out there. There are special event flyers, and that can help you get started on your journey of promotion. And once you're feeling comfortable with your special event flyers, I encourage you to try out Canva and stick with Canva. When I first started using it, it took some time to get used to how to move my content around, how to make the appropriate colors to follow the brand manual. But once you use it after a little bit, you will find that you can create beautiful flyers for your club that look professional, that are branded. I do encourage you to use flyers that are appropriately sized for the platform you're using. For example, Facebook and Instagram have different sizes. So you wanna make sure that whatever size you're using is for the primary platform you're gonna use. Cause we don't want somebody's head to be cut off, right? We wanna make sure that we have all of them. And Simone, I see you have a question. Yeah, <clears throat> um, I wanted to ask to what you just said. Uh, and I have like, attended like um because i'm also new to my role at attended one of the other um sessions with the colors and the branding colors and stuff like this now just as a general question if you do like flyers um or like those let's say instagram posts do they always have to uh, include the toastmasters colors or if the logo is always according to the guidelines, can the rest be, let's say, as colorful as I would want to do it, as long as the Toastmaster logo is correct? Or does the overall look have to be in the Toastmasters colors? You want to use the Toastmasters colors because it will create that professional look and feel. And it will also help show that you're part of the organization so I really recommend that you do stick to the Toastmasters colors because Toastmasters Internationals, you know, studied the colors and studied what the colors will attract um, the target audience. So I do encourage you to always leverage the Toastmasters brand manual and use those colors. I will say I have broken the rules for special meetings such as a Halloween or a Valentine's Day. Although Valentine's Day, you can use the true maroon. But Halloween, I really struggled when I saw the true maroon pumpkins or blue pumpkins. So I did make them orange. <laughs> <laughs> so I will say, stick with the Toastmasters brand and look and feel as much as possible. There will okay. be times that maybe you have to break the brand a little bit. But I do recommend for the most part you stick with it because it will create that professionalism and attract the right group of people to your club. So like in the brand manual, I assume then that I can find the whatever these color number, like color code or whatever you, you would call this. So let's say if I use Canva, then I just have to plug in the color code. And let's say if there's a template that's let's say red, it would switch to then the red into the color of the Toastmasters code that I give in there, correct? Correct. Okay, yeah. Awesome. And I do have the color codes a little bit later in this. And so, and we will drop it in chat as well. So okay. I use it as my cheat sheet for 
the color codes. And in Canva, one of the great things is you can set up your color codes. Even with the free account in Canva, you can set up your color codes. So I always usually just set up the blue and the true maroon because those are the ones that I use the most. And then I'll complement it with white and black. And those are very easy to find in Canva. So that is something that I do. It, you can also request a nonprofit account in Canva and then you get the full suite and you can add your full brand profile to it. Some clubs have been successful with getting the Canva for nonprofit account. Awesome. That was super helpful. Thank you so much, Julie. You're welcome. Okay, branding. I know we talked a little bit about branding, but it really makes that memorable impression. Your customers know what to expect. And at this point, your, your customers are your members or your guests, but it really distinguishes yourself. There are a lot of public speaking organizations out there, but Toastmasters is something unique. It's that experiential learning that you don't get elsewhere. And therefore we want to make sure that we're branded because somebody will say, oh, did you hear about Toastmasters? Or, oh, I'm a Toastmaster. And so we want to have that same look and feel. That way we can attract the appropriate guests. And branding is a true representation of us as a business. How do we want to be perceived? How do we want to be perceived as a club? Very important to think about. These are a few examples of branding. When I see these logos, I instantly know what I'm going to get. And if you think about it, your Starbucks, your McDonald's, their franchises, and they all, some of them, have their own promotions that they prepare outside of you know, corporate, but they all are following the brand guidelines. So I know our clubs are not franchises, we're not owned, we're all independent entities, but it is the same. You know, when you go to Starbucks, when you go to McDonald's, is going to be very similar. And the Toastmasters program is similar to that. We have speeches, we have evaluations, and we have table topics. Each of us have our own execution, and that's okay. But we do want to make sure that we follow that same look and feel so we are able to create that desire for guests to join. This Hostmasters logo, and this is where you can download them. Proper logo usage. You can add your club name to the logo, which will help you stand out a little bit more. And you can also use the since 1924 version as well to show that Toastmasters is this organization that has been around. It is a proven opportunity for them to grow. Okay, but we do not want to mod modify our logos. If you think about it, the Starbucks logo never changes. Why? Because it's created to have a look and feel. Similar to that, we don't want to mess with the Toastmasters logo. We want to be that professional organization. I really encourage you, don't mess with it. You will be able to create beautiful designs by using the logo as it is. The color palette, you can use this as your cheat sheet and put these numbers into Canva or other graphic design programs that you use. I use Canva. I find it to be very simple. I know Adobe has also launched a program that's supposed to be similar to Canva. I haven't really explored it yet but that is something that you can try as well. And I know both of them are trying to add the AI aspect to it. So that is something that I have played with a little bit when one of my clubs was having an anniversary celebration. I had it help me create an anniversary poster. And then of course you need to recolor it to fit your club. But that is something that you can take a look at. And yes, you can also use the hex codes in PowerPoint as well. Thank you so much, Jean. And Toastmasters International is helping us 
celebrate and add to the celebration with some new centennial resources. This is a great way to demonstrate that the organization is a proven resource. The logos, the wallpapers, the PowerPoint, the email signature. I still need to swap my email signature out every time I get an email with someone with this new email signature. I'm like, oh, I need to swap my email signature. It just It's such a great celebration that we will have coming up in Anaheim. I hope to see all of you at the international convention. And if not, that is okay. We can still celebrate the path to 100 years in October. I know a lot of people say, well, if I follow the branding, how can I have unique content for my club? What you can do is you through Canva or PowerPoint or other graphic design tools, you can start with a template and you can color it to meet the Toastmasters guidelines. Simone, our Founders District Public Relations Manager, is doing an excellent job with helping clubs create posters for their anniversaries, their open houses. I do encourage you to reach out to Simone if you would like some help with your content. I would love if you could give her a couple weeks so she can develop it, but she can turn something around very quick for you as well. So I encourage you to really take a look at your resources, follow the Toastmasters templates, and you can still infuse your own personality and unique value proposition into it. As you can see, here are two different clubs with two very different designs. We've talked a lot about promoting, but where do I promote? You have to decide on which platforms. Start with one, maybe two, and then branch out from there. You also need to ask your club, are you on board with this? Because this is not a post and forget about it opportunity. You want to make sure your members are liking, sharing, commenting, and really engaging with your content your Microsoft Teams slash SharePoint. This is what I use at work, but it may depend on what your company uses. Ask, take a look and say, okay, how is HR communicating with us? Do we have an event platform? Where are they posting content besides email or maybe it's strictly email? Whatever it may be, I encourage you to partner with HR or see if you can even better get access to those tools. And I would encourage you to not necessarily post every single meeting because that's just going to create people to tune out. But when you have an open house or perhaps you can have an executive come to one of the meetings and talk about why communication and leadership is so incredibly important. Those are the types of items that you would want to promote. And if your members are, well, when your members, because you all have outstanding members, when your members complete those levels, especially when they complete a path, then you can ask your members, what is it that you learned? And you can share that recognition, perhaps in the company profiles. Your Google business profile. This is great if your club is meeting in person. It When someone is searching for a Toastmasters club near them, it will pop up into the rankings. And I always like to say that I am geographically challenged and when I know, oh, it's in this building, this is what the building should look like, it's a great way for me to help find it. Of course, put the Toastmasters signage out front, but it's a great way for me to be able to plan and know what I need to be looking for before I even leave my house. LinkedIn, this is one of the great ways to attract new members because you are on LinkedIn, people are looking for that professionalism. And then when they're looking for professionalism, that's what Toastmasters International can provide for them. Ask your members to provide testimonials on how Toastmasters has helped their career. And then you can also include additional posts about the benefits of Toastmasters. A lot of people ask me, should I do a Facebook group or should I do a page? You can do both, but you have different target audiences. A group is great for your club and all your club business, but many a times 
someone's not going to join a group and it's not as easy to share from a group. But a page is used to get outside your club. So you wanna keep that very focused on external promotions. Ask your members to RSVP to the meeting. You can create a event on your Facebook page. Invite your friends, encourage them to share, comment. All those great ways will help attract more people. After your meeting, post those highlights, those member achievements, meetup. Now, this is one of the things, especially in meetup, that it's not just to create all your events and forget about it. When someone joins a group, private message them. Ask, hey, can I connect with you to share some details about our upcoming meeting? Ask, hey, what are you hoping to learn? And then, and this works for many of the profiles as well. Once you ask them what they're hoping to learn, make sure that you highlight in your meeting how Toastmasters International can meet that need for them. And then they're going to be more likely to become a member because they're going to feel that this is something that can meet their needs. Obviously, subtly mention it. And then that way it doesn't feel like you're just telling them, oh, this is something that can meet your needs this way. But you can work that into the conversation. Instagram. It's a very visual platform. I do find it a little bit more challenging, though, because you cannot share. So it stays, I find, a little bit more within your profile. But it is still a great platform to get out there. And, you know, one of the things that one of our clubs has been very successful with is creating Instagram reels. Because it doesn't just go away in 24 hours. And people love to watch reels. I watch so many of them about so many random things. And then it keeps serving it to you in your feed. So once people are watching it and engaging with it, and then it's going to be served to them. And then they're going to have that fear of missing out because that's what our social media is designed for, right? That FOMO. And then they're going to show up at your meeting. And then they're going to be so engaged with you that they're going to want to become a member. 